when you start to learn to sew, I know you're filled with hopes and dreams and a uh, wondrous like excitement over the things that you're going to make. I mean, the pattern says easy and you dive into it and all of a sudden you start to realize that there are so many things that the pattern just assumes that you know. So this is a how to read a pattern, but a little bit different. This is the 10 things that actually it's 11 that uh, the pattern envelope does not tell you uh, before you start learning to sew. Welcome back my lovely sewing friends. It is so nice to see your smiling faces here again. Uh, if we are just meeting, my name is Evelyn Wood and here on this channel we do everything vintage sewing skills to help our modern day sewing so you can get better at your sewing and see those improvements. So if it sounds like something that you're interested in, do hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell to let YouTube know that you actually uh, want to see my videos. Today's topic is one that pretty much every single new sewer experiences when you start. Uh, I know I did. Uh, my experience is that you pick up a pattern and you think, I'm going to learn how to sew. This looks fabulous. It even says easy on the pattern envelope. This is going to be such a cinch. And of course, you know that when you start using the pattern, you realize there are so many things that are just not mentioned on here, mostly because it's just well, patterns, sewing patterns, uh, there's a level of assumed knowledge that come with using those. There's many reasons why, and perhaps that's a different video, but this one I want to talk with you about the 10, actually it's 11 things that I found that are not written on the pattern envelope. So get your pen and paper, and particularly if you're new to sewing, write these down, because these are the things that you'll want to uh, research and further learn about so that you can be able to pick up a pattern and start to learn how to sew. So what is the first one? Let's go. The first one that the pattern envelope I think uh, does not tell you is that the sizes on here are not uh, the sizes that we wear in the store. So they do not correlate to the size that when we go shopping and we find our size, these sizes on here are not those. Now uh, it does say body measurements and all those types of things, but when you're first sewing, you don't kind of really pick that up and realize that uh, that is not the case. Uh, and there's a difference between body measurements, garment measurements and the likes. Uh, that's actually going to be a topic of uh, next week's video. So do stay tuned for that one. The pattern envelope does also not explain to you what ease is and that the pattern actually has this magical thing called ease in there. Now, uh, again, this is uh, something, ease is why your garment ends up bigger and one of the reasons why it turns out a different size than you might think it is. Um, I think that's another video for another day, but about ease and how it is in the body and the garments and why it's there, it's like extra room for movement and it just doesn't explain that. So you just don't understand why your garments don't tan out quite the size that you think they will and why there's a difference in the size when it's all made up, what it looks like, and that's for ease. So uh, do look into that topic and it is something I think we'll cover in um, more videos. Do let me know if any of these are um, points along the way that you're struggling to figure out, do let me know in the comments below because I can make some videos on them. And I think uh, once we get into the pattern envelope here, one of the things that the pattern does not explain very well to us new sewers is what the grain line is. So of course it tells us to put things on the grain line and um, you know, it has little arrows and it's all marked there, but as a new sewer, you have no idea what this means. Is it very important? I mean, we've all done the thing where we put the patterns on just any which way because we don't know what the grain line is or how important it is, what it even means properly, because if we don't understand things, then we don't know why we're doing them and then we don't do them. <laughs> so I think that's one thing that gets skipped a lot. And so if you're a new sewer, you definitely want to uh, find out more about what the grain line is and really uh, get some further knowledge so you can really understand why you're putting all of the pattern pieces on the grain line. Something missing uh, from the pattern, I think, is why we are cutting things on the fold and the difference between sort of a, a pair of um, pieces 
and two of the same pieces. So, and that is why we cut things on the fold. So you fold it out and you get a mirror image of each side. I don't think the pattern envelope really explains this very well. Of course, it's all diagrammed there. And when you know how to read a pattern, it makes sense and you know why and everything. But the first couple of times that you pick up a pattern, it makes no sense. Why are you cutting it on the fold? Why does the right sides have to be together? I don't know. Does it make a difference? I mean, these are the things that I remember asking myself when first looking at this. And I don't think the pattern envelope explains that very well. So I definitely think that is also something to further investigate and uh, find out why so you can understand uh, those points of the pattern. And I really wish that somewhere in big bold print that it had on here how important being precise is when cutting out and sewing things. It is just like close is not good enough when it comes to uh, sewing and patterns. Um, as I'm sure you know, we find out the hard way, right? We all do when we're learning to sew, that you have to be so precise when you're cutting out your patterns. You're, you know, you need to cut so it's done exactly on the actual pattern. Your fabric can't be a, a half a centimeter longer or shorter or wonky. It just, it doesn't work. When you sew them together, if you end up with seams that don't match, uh, it's it's going to cause you more problems along the way and that sort of thing isn't really written in here that you don't know and when it happens you don't know why you don't know what's going on Ugh. I did actually make this video here on um, why your seams might not match so if it's something that you struggle with uh, I have that video to go watch it'll be linked down below so I think that's something uh, to also make sure that you're aware of is how precise you need to be when cutting when sewing the patterns are like puzzle pieces they've all been mathematically worked out to go together exactly down to the millimeter so if you're not uh, putting them together in the same manner and being careful when you cut things out you know, you know how much of a disaster it turns into. We have all been there. I know so many of you will agree with me on this one, uh, that it should be in huge, bold, like red writing on here somewhere, how important pressing is. So, you know, your pattern might say, you know, sew the seam and, and press, and that's about all you get. So it's not really stressed upon you in here how important pressing is. Or you see pressing and you think, is that the same as ironing? I don't know. Um, oh, it doesn't seem important. I'll skip it and just keep going on. And of course, when you don't, it causes many more problems down the track. All these snowball when you don't do these things that you're supposed to just magically know uh, that that is really important. So uh, I will stress to uh, every new sewer how important pressing is and how much of a difference it makes in your sewing. But it's just not really written on here or stressed enough to us, I don't think, um, in patterns. It would be really nice, um, you know, to just have a big warning sign that comes out if you try and skip the pressing step. Imagine that if you tried to skip it and a big warning lights came off on your pattern and it wouldn't let you progress. I don't know whether that was good or bad. It would be helpful, but probably at the time you would hate it, I'm sure. <laughs> this is the good one. So the pattern assumes that you know that you should be back stitching at every seam. This is something that you don't know when you start sewing and it's not written on the pattern usually that every seam that you start, you need to be back stitching so that your uh, threads won't just unravel. Like when you start sewing, you don't know these things and no one, like if no one tells you, of course, how would you possibly know? Uh, and of course, like, you know, you can't write every single thing on the pattern. And this is why this sort of comes into assumed knowledge. Um, and what's why it's helpful to have someone help you when you get started sewing to, to help you through these little things like telling you when you start and end a, a line of stitching, you will always backstitch uh, so that your, your hard work doesn't come apart. And with that one, I think comes with uh, finish your seams in the usual manner. What is finished seams and what is the usual manner? I know. <laughs> so it's often very much assumed that you will know what finish your seams means. But of course, I remember I had zero idea what finish my seams meant uh, when I started sewing. So finishing your seams is putting a treatment, a, uh, a finish on the raw edges of the fabric so that it doesn't fray. 
uh, and now you know choosing a method so there are many methods and I've actually made a couple of videos on seam finishes uh, you can do a zigzag stitch a serger a overlocker you could do a feld seam a French seam all of these are different methods and you can choose whichever one is suitable to your fabric to your garment to your project what you want to learn what you want it to look like in the end so it's often just assumed that you know to finish your seams and you know how to finish your seams uh, from the patterns and they really don't put that there because I mean imagine if you had to write that every single time You know, it's like the pressing you just take it as a given that you kind of just know that's what you're supposed to do um, When you're sewing but of course you don't know this to start out and so something else I think is missing from the pattern envelope is that uh, for the pattern in general is that uh, to fit the garment uh, along the way before you finish up all of your zips and your hems and before you finish the garment is to fit it. Now of course when you very very first start sewing uh, I don't actually recommend that you worry about the, the fit and anything like that first you just make up a few garments to just make up a few garments and get those skills and garment construction and just putting things together and then sort of look at fitting your your garment but they really don't say anything about trying it on before you finish uh, sewing because I know that we've all done this because I know I have uh, did this so many times learning and I learned that you know the hard long way is that you just pick your size and you sew it all the way to the end and then you put it on and then you get really heartbroken because you realize that it doesn't fit right and uh, and it doesn't take a few garments before you realize you could make a few simple changes just running it in here or letting it out there just a little bit would make such a big difference but they just don't tell you to do that before you finish everything up when it is possible to make these changes so if you are new definitely uh, write that one down to remember to do is to fit along the way so put it on before you've finished everything up while you can still make those critical changes uh, at that point and then I think the last thing that I think that is sort of missing from the patterns is that they don't tell you to test yeah, so I did recently make this video on uh, how much testing that I do on every garment and it's just something that is not really talked about a lot uh, and that is how much testing. So testing your stitches, testing your machine, testing the, the type of stitch for the fabric you're using, testing the seam finish that you want to do on the fabric you're using, testing the fit of the pattern before you go, making your twiles, making your mock-ups. These things are not written here and so you just think that you must just pick up your garment and do the sewing on the actual garment. Um, that's what you must do, right? Whereas uh, I know you probably know as well, learnt the hard way that you want to be experimenting and testing all these things uh, first before you actually do it on your garment because you want all of the rubbish ones to get out of the way first so that all your all of your good stitching is done onto your your re real garment, as we often say. So I think that is something that is missing from the pattern as well is just how much testing is involved and if you want a really nice, neat finish uh, you know is what you can do just how many things you can uh, test I would absolutely love to hear down in the comments below which ones of these were your biggest uh, like which do you resonate with the most that you found was just why does the pattern not tell me this <laughs> I would love to hear them below and please I am sure there are others that I have not included do leave me a comment below because uh, we can all read them and all learn and I might just make a video again collating all those other ones so that we can all figure out these things that are just you know the assumed knowledge of the pattern I look forward to reading your comments do uh, look down in this description box below for all the links there's a bunch of other videos that I think you'll really enjoy watching that are sort of related to this topic so thank you so much for watching and until next time happy sewing bye